Alright guys, just over a week left till Weathering Waves is here. So I'm going to be going through which characters work the best with each other so you have a general idea on which teams you may want to aim to build when the game launches. Just before that, would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel for more Weathering Waves content and drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Also, just so you know, if you sub, you'll get Yinlin in your first temple. With the team compositions now, they will be based on how well the kits of these characters synergize so they can benefit each other in battle. As always, don't feel forced into having to build these teams if you want to run a full waifu or husbando team and have fun, be my guest. Okay, as we know, teams consist of three characters and the usual consensus of building teams is that there will be a main DPS, sub DPS and a support character. As for the support role, I would recommend every team to have either Baiji or Verena. These two characters are the only ones currently that can provide a ton of healing to the team and can also provide buffs enabling your main DPS and and sub DPS to deal more damage. Verena is definitely the better choice given she is a 5 star so she will be able to provide more through her kit such as more ways to heal and the buff multipliers are just higher than Baiji's buffs. I like to think because Baiji has a much better character design they had to make Verena's kit more appealing. Either way the third slot will be one of these two characters so moving forward I'm only going to go over the main DPS and the sub DPS for the team compositions. The first team consists of Kalcharo and Yinlin. It's a bit more of an expensive team but it does pack a punch. I know Yinlin isn't dropping in the game until roughly after 3 weeks but I'm going over this team as it may help you guys with who to aim for in the beginner banner, as Kalcharo will be the best one for Yin Lin. Now both Sephiroth and Yin Lin are lightning characters where Kakarot will play the role of a main DPS and Yin Lin will play the role of a sub DPS. Yin Lin can be played as a main DPS but thanks to her outro skill it provides 20% increased electro damage and resonance liberation damage is increased by 25% which allows her to play the role of a sub DPS too. So Kalcharo will deal a ton more damage when he does switch in and pop his ultimate. Just bear in mind Kalchara's ultimate is him switching into a secondary state but he does still deal resonance liberation damage just after he switches. The rest of his duration in the secondary state though he will be dealing damage scaling on his basic attack. Kacharo is more like a single target damage dealer as he will focus on dealing a lot of damage to one enemy. Yin Lin on the other hand is an AoE DPS character which can deal lots of damage to multiple enemies around her. So covering both single target damage and AoE target damage these two together synergize very well. Kacharo is just a bit more of a greedy DPS as he won't be able to provide anything to Yin Lin so you would want to keep him on the field longer to utilize his kit. As I mentioned Yin Lin isn't going to release until sometime after the game launches so until she arrives I would recommend using Mortify with Kacharo until you pull Yin Lin. Mortify's ultimate will deal fusion follow-up attacks for Kalcharo when he uses his basic attacks and heavy attacks which he deals a ton of. Also Mortify's outro skill will increase Kalcharo's heavy attack damage by 38% so it will greatly benefit Kalcharo too. These two are also quite strong together but Yin Lin is going to be the better pair up for Kalcharo for sure. Main reason being it's Yin Lin. Uh, no, I don't the next team up is going to consist of Danjin and Tauchi. This is going to be more of a free to play friendly team in comparison to the one before so players shouldn't find it too difficult building this team. Both Danjin and Tauchi are 4 stars and are the only Havoc units in the game which luckily synergize very well together. Danjin is a secret 5 star in terms of DPS and will want to be the main DPS dealing lots of damage and Tauchi will be the sub DPS. Danjin has a unique gimmick where she sacrifices her HP for her to be able to use her skill without a cooldown. Tied with a heavy attack that can heal herself and her ultimate dealing amazing havoc damage she is one hell of a unit. Danjin's outro skill allows her to not hog the spotlight and will allow Tauchi to take the field too. When Danjin switches out she will provide increased havoc damage by 30% for Tauchi. Tauchi is a defense scaler and is more of a burst damage dealer as her ultimate's damage comes out in one massive swing of havoc damage opposed to damage being dealt over time. Tauchi can also be considered as a support since she can provide 3 shields to the team through her resonance skill. She also has a self heal through her skill so she will be able to keep herself topped up when she is taking damage. Tauchi also has the ability to parry attacks by holding down a heavy attack and just like her shields it reduces damage taken by enemies. But I would have preferred if she could completely nullify damage with her parry at least. Either way it's pretty cool that she can parry anything targeting her. Well apart from the masses of players that are after her due to obvious reasons. How Danjin's outro skill can benefit Tauchi, Tauchi's outro skill will benefit Danjin in return as it increases resonant skill damage by 38%. So Danjin will really be able to take advantage of that outro skill since she has no cooldown on her resonant skill, enabling her to deal a lot more damage for 14 seconds after switching in. Considering that Tauchi can be seen as a sub DPS and support, it's really down to preference whether you would want either Verena or Baiji in the third slot for extra support. You could rely on Tauchi to nullify damage taken to the team and have the third slot open to someone like Yang Yang or Jian Shin that can crowd control for Dungeon to take enemies down quicker. However, you will be missing out on the attack buffs from Baiji and Verena, so you will need to consider that when building the team. Moving on to Zhao. 
Moving on to Jian and Mortifi, which will be a powerful duo accessible for launch since Mortifi is going to be on Jian's banner. Jian is an arrow main DPS character and the main source of his damage would be from his Resonance Liberation. Similar to Kalcharo, Jian will switch into his secondary state through his ultimate and will allow him to deal tons of damage which will be considered as heavy attacks. Now unlike Dungeon and Tauchi that support each other, I'll be real Mortifi is only here to support Jian to enable him to deal even more DPS. So just consider Jian as a one man army. Also since Jian can buff his own damage through a few passives such as his basic and heavy attack damage being increased when switching in as well as his own crit rate. Mortifi as I mentioned earlier with Kalcharo will be able to increase heavy attack damage by 38% and through his ultimate will deal fusion follow-up attacks through Jian's attacks. Mortifi will deal two fusion follow-up attacks on heavy attacks and one for basic attacks. So the synergy between Mortifi and Jian is perfect since Jian is dealing a ton of heavy attacks through his ultimate. So the overall DPS dealt to enemies when you pair both ultimates from Jian and Mortifi is pretty insane. Insane. Jian is an incredible AoE damage dealer and has very fast paced combat as a dragon he summons through his resonance liberation will crowd control enemies too, so they're kinda locked in to take a barrage of heavy attacks. Also, Jian's skill allows him to dash forward which helps him to close the distance between him and enemies. It can also be used whilst in midair which is pretty cool and reminiscent of Zhao from Genshin. An alternative to Mortifi would be Alto since he can provide 30% arrow damage through his outro skill but Mortifi is definitely the better option and will be on Jian's banner, so I wouldn't see why you would pick Alto over Mortifi since you are pretty much guaranteed him if you summon for Jian. Now those three teams are going to be the best ones in the game in my opinion, but I still want to touch upon Ling Yang, Jian Xin and Encore since I know players will want to use them. Ling Yang and San Hua will be the combo to go for, with Ling Yang being the main DPS character and San Hua being the sub DPS. Ling Yang is the brawler type that will be dealing a ton of basic attacks and with his skill also being added to his basic attack sequence. His resonance liberation will increase his glacial damage and will allow him to deal basic attacks whilst in midair. San Hua being a 4 star glacial character can also be played as a main DPS but in this situation with Ling Yang will play the role as a sub DPS due to her outro skill providing 20% additional glacial damage. San Hua is capable of dealing a ton of damage in a very short amount of time. So after you have her combos locked down you can switch her in to deal a ton of damage and switch back into Ling Yang with his glacial damage being buffed. That would be the gist of things between this duo. Now since San Hua does provide 20% extra glacial damage I do want to point out that Baiji being glacial will deal more damage too if you switch into Baiji from San Hua that is. Marina will still be the better choice as she can buff both San Hua and Ling Yang's damage a lot more, but just something to note if you are running Baiji instead. Now regarding Encore, she is a ranged main DPS character but can also play the role of a sub DPS so this kind of means you have a lot more freedom with who you place her with. There isn't a dedicated fusion buffer as of yet but the main source of Encore's damage does come from her resonance liberation where she turns into a demon lolly and goes berserk. In her secondary state the damage she will be dealing would be her basic attack so that means Mortifi once again will be a great support. Encore dealing a lot of basic attacks means more fusion follow-up attacks dealt by Mortifi's ultimate. So that would really sum up Encore within the main DPS position. As a sub DPS when you hold a charged attack button down she causes massive AoE damage. So you could have a switch in to deal a chunk of AoE damage and switch back out. So you could really place her with anyone that has a sub DPS position open. My favourite team would probably be taking the kids to kindergarten team. You've got mother being the main DPS and her two kids being a sub DPS and a healer. A bit on the expense side but due to Encore's flexibility it's really down to preference where you place her as a sub DPS. Lastly, Jian Shin. Now Jian Shin is a support character but due to how long she will need to remain on the field to proc her support capabilities she can be considered as a sub DPS. As a support she does provide crowd control so as I mentioned earlier with Danjin and Taochi you could have Jian Shin in the team to crowd control enemies for Danjin or Taochi to use the ultimates on them to clear quicker. That would be the general idea regarding her crowd control as you can have any DPS use their ultimate or skill paired with Jian Shin's ultimate to just get through them more efficiently. She can also provide 38% increase resonance liberation damage through her outro skill so your main DPS can deal more damage through the ultimate. Characters such as Kalcharo, Jian and Encore wouldn't benefit from this however since their damage would be considered as something else opposed to resonance liberation damage. Characters such as Dan Jin would benefit from this since her resonance liberation is just pure liberation damage. Kinda getting sick from mentioning Mortifi but again he would be able to benefit Jian Shin's basic attack damage. So considering that Jian Shin will need to deal quite a few basic attacks to charge her gauge you can see some synergy between them. But the team would then drop either Verena or Bai Ji and you'll have Jian Shin on the team as support and as an additional sub DPS along with Mortifi and a main DPS. 
Just as her kit is clunky, unfortunately her team synergies are too. She is confirmed to receive a buff, so we'll see if those buffs can change her team synergies also. And that wraps it up. As I mentioned, the first three teams being Yinlin and Kalcharo, Danjin and Tauchi, and Jian and Mortifi will be the best teams to use in my opinion, based on how well they synergize together. Again, feel free to build any team you want to have fun with if that's your preference. The team I'm most looking forward to first would have to be Danjin and Tauchi with the hopes that they don't nuke Danjin's kit, but the priority will be Kalcharo and Yinlin since they are shaping to be a powerhouse of a duo. Also because you know it's Yinlin. If you guys enjoyed the video, would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel for more Wuthering Waves content and drop a like. Also, maybe comment down the team you are most looking forward to running. And yeah, hope to catch you guys later.